Hello everyone, Vicar Linda here. Lovely to hear and to see you all again. But like last time, shall we start our assembly by lighting our candle and saying our prayer. So let us pray. Lord God, as we light this candle, joining our prayers to those that have gone before, we ask your blessing on all of us and all whom we love in Jesus' name. Amen. Last time we talked about God, our creator, as a kite maker. Today, I thought it would be good to think about God's creation in our natural world, especially plants. Now, my husband, John, has an amazing variety of carnivorous plants. And did you know that there are more than 750 types of species? Let me just show you a few of them and tell you just a little bit about them. Now, everybody knows about these Venus flytraps. Now, these are found in the USA, North and South Carolina. And if you look We've got fingers on this one around the trap and then on this side, they're almost non-existent. Can you see? Same species, very, very different. How about this one? Now this is called a butterwort because when you touch the leaves, it feels just like butter. And these are found in most parts of the world. And these are also found in Wales. Look at the beautiful flowers, aren't they gorgeous? Absolutely lovely. Now then, what about Drosera? Now these are the sundews and they're sticky, sticky leaves. Now this one is just very flat, circular. And then I have here this one, which is very different again, sticky leaves, but they grow up and they are very very small so can you see them shimmering there we go very different again now I have two here and I'm hoping this is going to work this is one of my favorites this is a picture plant there we go and if I lower it down you can see the picture itself how pretty it looks and this is a leucophila and then we have something different again and this is called a purpurea and as you can see they're like chunky fat fingers I like that and they do like to have snails now the variety within carnivorous plants is amazing there are different differences in size differences in appearance and they each have different individual qualities there are differences in development, even within a species. You won't get one plant identical to another. Each is part of a pattern of life through a shared existence. Now, what this shows us is that it's important for us to remember to respect and value life in all its diversity. We're increasingly made aware of the need for conservation and the effects of our exploitation of limited resources. Many Christians believe that it's important to stand up for issues relating to the value of God's creation in the natural world. This means valuing and respecting each other. Right. Shall we have our reading? Now, this reading that I'm going to do today is actually taken from the Lion Storyteller Bible, and it is part of two pieces from Genesis. A reading from Genesis. Earth, that's what God said, and the blue-green waters parted, and there was dry land underneath. Great patches of it, dirt, black and brown, here and there, all over the world. 
We need some colour, God whispered, as if he was thinking out loud. And quivering with excitement, green growing things crept up out of the dark earth, then burst into blossom, red, orange, pink and blue. Pine trees and palm trees, rose bushes and blackberry bushes, tulips, chrysanthemums and carnivorous plants. Then when everything was ready, good and ready, God spoke again. Man and woman is what he said, as if he was calling the names of his best friends. And out of the dust came Adam and Eve. Welcome to my world, God said to Adam. Isn't it good? Welcome to my garden, God said to Eve. This is the most beautiful place of all, and I want it to be your home. Take care of the animals, take care of the plants, and eat whatever you like. There are plenty of trees to pick from. Adam and Eve didn't know what to say. They looked at the garden, they looked at each other, and then they smiled the world's first smile. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we need to be thankful for all plants, not just the ones I've shown you. While some plants may not seem to be pretty, they look rather dull and boring. Now our world depends upon the world of plants. And as I tell you about them, Let's have some actions, shall we? Okay, here we go. When I say plants, trees, flowers, leaves and roots, let's do that. A plant is growing and opening up. Well done. When I say eat, let's go yum, 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 yum. Bet you can do that nice and easy, can't you? What about warmth? Let's warm our hands by the fire. When I say cars or lorries, let's hold and move a steering wheel. There we go, we're driving. When I say clothes and any clothes that I mention, let's touch our clothes. There we go, clothes. When I say fragrance or scented, let's smell our wrist of the perfume that's on it. When I say books, let's open the book up and read it. Well done. Okay, now here are some facts about plants. We give thanks for the plants we eat, not only cabbages, but grains of wheat that are made into flour and baked into bread. So much comes from plants even the air we breathe. Plants provide the oxygen that our lungs and bodies need. Without plants, how would we build homes and schools? Trees provide the timber that we need for shelter and furniture. And wood is used to fashion many of the tools that are needed. When it's cold, plants provide us with warmth. Wood is used in the manufacture of matches, got some matches here, and for fuel. Coal and gas found deep below the ground come from plants that have lived some 350 million years ago. The petrol and oil used in cars and lorries, also comes from plant material. And biodiesel is made from the crushed seeds of crops grown today. When it comes to moving around our world, other plants are important. Natural rubber is used for some components, parts of cars, and if you can't afford 
a car, you'll need some Wellington boots. Clothes come from the world of plants. T-shirts and jeans made from cotton. It's a white fibre that grows around the seed of the cotton plant. Our health also depends upon plant life. Many medicines were first extracted from flowers, leaves and roots. Aspirin, for instance, comes from a substance found in the bark of willow trees. Plants add fragrance to our world and are used in some shampoos and shower gels. Our world would be unpleasantly smelly without the scented life of plants. Learning would also be very dull. Imagine a school without books, yet without trees. There would be no wood to pulp into paper and no pencils either. Can you imagine how we see our world and how we depend upon the world of plants? In caring for plants, we care for the planet and are linked with people across the globe. I hope you enjoyed that. I did too. So shall we finish with our prayer? Dear God, thank you for the beauty and wonder that we see in the world. Thank you for the diversity in plants, in animals and in people. Help us to value all that is different Help us to value and respect each other. Amen. We now come to the end of our assembly. So how about we blow this candle out? Now, if it's your birthday, obviously, you'd be good at blowing out this candle. However, how about we all blow a candle out? Are we ready? One, two, Three. <laughs> Ooh, smoke. Until next time, stay safe. Bye.